we're going to start chapter uh, 27, which is going to be on circuits. Okay, so in order to produce a steady flow of charge through a resistor, one needs to uh, pump that charge. So you need a charge pump or uh, a device that by doing work on the charge carriers maintains a potential difference between a pair of terminals. Now such a device is called an EMF or an electromotive force. A common EMF device is a battery, that's probably the most common, um, used to power a wide variety of machines from wristwatches to submarines. Now the EMF device that most influences our daily lives is the electric generator, which by means of electric or connections, or wires, from a generating plant creates a potential difference in our homes and workplaces. So some of, um, other EMF devices are known as solar cells or fuel cells. An EMF device does not have to be an instrument, uh, living systems ranging from electric eels and human beings uh, to plants have physiological EMF devices. All right, so basically, we need to create something that is going to put a current in the circuit. It's going to maintain a potential difference in your circuit, which um, allows the current to flow, or the, the flow of charge. Okay. Um, so the figure here, uh, it's a, a simple electric circuit in which a device of EMF E does uh, does work on the charge carriers and maintains a steady um, current I in a resistor of resistance R. Now I said E, but this is actually epsilon. So I'm just going to write this like that. You can come up with your own um, fancy way of writing that, but epsilon for me is just going to look like that. Okay, now in any time interval dt, a charge dq is going to pass through any cross-section of the circuit shown such as this cross-section here, right? So in a small amount of time, in a small increment of time, there's going to be a net flow of charge dq. Um, the same amount of charge must enter the EMF device at its low potential end and leave at its high potential end. So while you have charge flowing through here, you also must have charge flowing into the low potential end and then coming out of the high potential end. Now the EMF uh, device must do an amount of work, dw, right, because it's doing work on this charge, it's doing work on dq, to force it uh, to move in this way. So we define EMF of the EMF device in terms of this, and in, in terms of work. All right, so it's just going to be a small increment of work per charge. Right, and that's the definition of epsilon, which is an EMF, right? which is, um, again, the electromotive force. Okay. So there's two types of EMF devices. One is going to be the ideal type, and in physics we often use ideal um, situations, when in reality it's probably um, pretty hard to actually have a, an ideal EMF device. Um, but anyway, so an ideal device um, is is one that uh, no has no internal resistance to the internal movement of charge from terminal to terminal. All right, the the potential difference between the terminals of an ideal EMF device is exactly equal to the EMF of the device. Okay, but in most cases, we're going to use a real EMF, uh, at least in, in practical situations. So the real EMF device, such as any real battery, has internal resistance to the internal movement of charge. So when a real EMF device is not connected to a circuit, and thus does not have current that goes through it, the potential difference between its terminals is equal to its EMF, like the ideal. However, when that device has current through it, the potential difference between its terminals differs from its EMF. So you're going to have some difference um, in the actual EMF, uh, um, or the, the potential difference is going to be slightly different than the actual EMF of, of the battery or, or the EMF device. Um, and we know this because, you know, oftentimes you have batteries that would heat up, so you know that there's some internal resistance that are giving off thermal energy. Okay. Um, so calculating the current in a single loop. All right, so we're going to start with single loops, keep it simple, and a single loop is just going to look like this. It's one big long series loop that's connected together. 
All right, this is going to be our battery. And just to remind everyone, symbol for battery looks like this. The long end is going to be the positive side. The short end is going to be the negative side. And the EMF is going to be going from negative to positive, right, which is also the direction of our current in this case. All right, so the battery drives current through the resistor from high potential to low potential. Now, this is an ideal um, uh, EMF device, so there's not going to be any internal resistance. Okay. So uh, let's start up here. The equation power is equal to the current squared times the resistance, which we've seen in previous chapter, tells us that in a time interval dt, an amount of energy given by I squared R dt will appear in the resistor, uh, as shown in the figure um, as thermal energy. So um, where did they get this from? Well, you know, we know power is just going to be the little increment of work over a period of time. And if that's equal to our current squared r, or just a little bit of work, is then going to be i squared r dt, right? Which is what they have here. All right, so this little bit of energy is going to be given by that. Um, and it's going to be given off in this resistor as thermal energy, as heat. So during the same interval, a charge dq which is we know as um, the current times dt, right? Because i is just dq dt. We'll have moved through the battery, and the work that that battery will have done on this charge is going to be the electromotive force times dq, right? Uh, which is the amount of work, right? The little bit amount of work. So uh, this is just going to be our epsilon i dt. Right. So basically what it's saying is as charge is getting pumped through this resistor, there also must be charge and work being done that's going through the battery or through the electromotive device. All right. So from the principle of conservation of energy, the work done by the ideal battery must equal the thermal energy that appears in the resistor. All right. So whatever um, additional energy you're, you're giving to the charge as in the battery, um, it needs to be taken away in the resistor and vice versa. All right, so we take those two equations, we put them together. This is going to be from the battery. This is going to be from the resistor. All right, we simplify this and we see that the electromotive force is just going to be the current times the resistance, or the current is the electromotive force divided by the resistance. Therefore, the energy per unit charge transferred to moving um, two moving charges is equal to the energy per unit charge transferred from them, right? So the amount of, again, the amount of energy we're, we're adding here is going to be the same amount of energy that we're taking away over here per unit charge. Okay. All right, moving along. Okay, so the potential method. Um, so here's one of our loop rules. All right, we're going to have a few. So the first one is the algebraic sum of the changes in potential encountered in a complete transversal of any loop of a circuit must equal zero. Right, so if you go around an entire circuit and you add up all the positive potentials and then the negative potentials with taking away potential, it all needs to add up to zero. All right, so in the figure, let us start at point A whose uh, potential is VA. So we're going to start right here and we're just going to call it some initial potential VA and then mentally go clockwise around the circuit until we're back at A. So we're going to go around in that direction, uh, keeping track of potential changes as we move. <clears throat> so our starting point is at the low potential terminal of the battery, right? This is the low potential terminal, which is the negative terminal. Um, since the battery is ideal, the potential difference between it, its terminals, is just going to be equal to the EMF, or epsilon, right? All right, so we're going to start at VA. We're going to add our epsilon. Now, as we go along the top of, of the resistor, there's no potential change because the wire has negligible resistance. So as we go around the wire, we're going to ignore any resistance that it might have, and then we get to the resistor. When we pass through the resistor, however, the potential difference decreases by IR, right? Because potential difference is... IR, that's uh, Ohm's law. <clears throat> so we know that we're going to be losing this much potential. All right, so we're going to subtract off IR. 
Uh, now we return uh, to point A by moving along the bottom wire. At point A, the potential is again VA. So if we set this equal to our final um, voltage, okay. Um, the initial potential as modified for potential changes along the way must equal to our final, final potential. Right, so our initial and then modify the change along the way is equal to our final potential. Now we just simplify this out. This is going to cancel. And all you're left with is your epsilon naught, which is your electromotive force, minus IR is equal to zero. So the changes as it went across is equal to zero. So it follows this root loop rule. Okay. Now, calculating the current for a single loop circuit, again, the potential method as we continue on, um, there's a couple more rules that we want to point out. All right, so the for, uh, for circuits that are more complex um, than that of the previous figure, which was pretty simple, two basic rules are usually followed for finding potential differences as we move around the loop. All right, one is the resistance rule. So for, um, for a move through a resistance in the direction of the current, and the change in potential is going to be minus IR. In the opposite direction, it's going to be positive IR. So if you are going around a circuit, and this is also the direction of the current, you go through some resistor, you're going to get a negative IR contribution. Now the EMF rule. So for a move through an ideal EMF device in the direction of the EMF arrow, the change in potential is plus epsilon. And in the opposite direction, it's going to be negative epsilon. So again, if you're, if you're now going through an EMF device and it's in this direction, as we go through this, we're going to get a positive contribution to EMF. Okay. All right, so internal resistance. Um, so here we have a circuit that doesn't have an ideal EMF device. All right? It's going to be a real battery, which means there's some inherent um, resistance inside of the battery. And we can just kind of model that as saying, this is our, if this is our whole battery here, and it's between terminals A and B there, um, there's going to be a resistance little r right there, um, as well as uh, the EMF. All right, so a single loop circuit containing a real battery having internal resistance, little r, in EMF, epsilon, the same circuit now spread out in a line. So we just took, took this circuit over here and we spread it out in a line up here. Um, the potentials encountered in transversing the circuit clockwise from A are also shown. The potential VA is arbitrarily assigned a value of zero. Uh, and the other potentials in the circuit are graphed relative to VA. All right, so if we call, just say our initial is zero. Again, it's a relative term because we're talking about potentials. Now we go through the EMF device. So we're going to get a change of whatever the EMF is, right? This change in potential as we go through the, the um, part of the battery. And then we go through the resistance of the battery. So again, this is our whole EMF device here, right? So the resistor is inside of it. We're going to lose some of our potential through that resistance, and that's going to be equal to whatever the current is times r. Oh, excuse me, this is going to be little r. Okay, now we're continuing. We're outside of the battery. We're at point B. Now we are um, having a constant potential until we hit the next resistor, which is over here. We have the same current going through it, and we have this IR drop here. Okay, and then we get back to our whatever our original potential is. All right, so the figure above shows a real battery with uh, internal resistance little r wired to an external resistor of resistance r. So according to, to the uh, potential rule, you're going to have your positive EMF as we go through it minus this internal resistance minus the big resistor, and that's going to be equal to zero. So if we simplify this and we solve for our current, it's going to be the EMF divided by the sum of the two resistors. All right, so the EMF divided by big R plus little r. All right, so this was for an, 
uh, a real um, EMF device. All right, so moving on. Um, when a potential difference uh, V is applied across resistances connected in series, the resistances have identical currents I, right? So we, we knew this from before. Um, remember with series Q, right? And Q is directly related to our current. Oops. Uh, so we know that the current is going to be constant or can, uh, constant along um, a single loop like this. So in series, you have a, a, a constant current. Um, the, uh, the sum of the potential differences across the resistances is equal to the applied potential difference V, right? So as we go, um, so we have a, a potential difference here, and that's going to be equal to the, the potential difference drop of this one, this one, and this one added together, all these res uh, resistors added together. All right, so let's write that out. So we have our positive EMF minus R1, excuse me, minus IR2 minus IR3 is equal to zero, which means our current is just our EMF divided by all the resistances. I R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now resistance uh, resistances connected in series can be replaced with an equivalent resistance, which we'll say is uh, R equivalent, that has the same current I and the same potential difference V um, as the actual resistances. All right, so if we just said it was one big equivalent resistor, it would be the same current and then some equivalent resistance is equal to zero. So you solve for your current. You see that your it's just your EMF divided by whatever your equivalent resistance is, right? And this equivalent resistance is just going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay. So this is when everything is in, in a series. So we took this circuit up here and we simplified it to this circuit down here. Right, so it's one equivalent resistance with the same current going across it. All right, all right. So in other words, your equivalent resistance is just the sum of all your resistances added together. All right, just the n number of resistances. All right, that's it for this lecture. We'll pick it up next time.